so much. I am super excited to be running this game. Eat Girl, uh, it's an indie game by Tesla, who's in the chat. Uh, thank you for being here and all the wonderful community members who I see that are here. It's a dot eating action game that is in the um, itch bundle for racial equality. So many of you already own this game. Please play it. It's a wonderful speed game as well. And with me, I have Eric J. Math, one of the other like, you know, big founders of the community who got me into this game. You want to say hi, Eric? Hello, everyone. I am super excited, and I'm going to be running the all standard levels um, category, which Eric can kind of explain once we get the run started. But for now, let's get going in three, two, one, and go. All right, so we are Eat Girl, and we just get to travel on this overworld between levels. Uh, and this is the first one called Lonely Soul. And we meet our first enemy, Greglings. And basically what we do in every level is we get blue dots, pink dots, and yellow dots. Uh, and so Eric can kind of explain a little bit about what the all standard levels category means. Sure. So uh, there's a standard any percent category for this game, of course. Um, it requires you to beat 18 levels, including the left final level, to uh, complete the game. But there are um, some optional levels that are skipped in the any percent category so in all standard levels we are going to be completing all of those levels uh all the ones you can get to before beating the game for the first time so there will be a 24 total levels including the final one uh in this run all right and this is unearthed um unearthed is really hard <laughs> this the well, worm cycles can be scary and you have to maintain your like p speed is what we like to call it um which gains every time that you turn and you lose it when you bonk. And you must have P-Speed to break the boxes, um, which is really important, especially in that level. Unearth is one of the hard uh, early stage uh, levels for sure. Yeah, so P-Speed has basically, uh, if you've played Mario 3, I think, um, Mario, how or just how Mario builds up speed, you build up speed in this game by going straight and turning. Um, you can see that we have P-Speed by uh, the little yellow trail behind the girl we call her i guess eat girl yeah and this level's really scary because the greglings are terrifying uh but that didn't go too badly actually <laughs> yeah these characters are all rng so um some runners choose to just reset the level over and over until they get the the good rng at the beginning. i do reset but it, we got lucky the greggling went down once at the beginning <laughs> very nice here is a, another enemy. These are called Gordos. They have two basic attacks. One is shooting these lightning bolts, and the other one is kind of the force field explosion when you get too close to them. Gordos are really scary um, in some of the later levels. When they're contained like that, they're not too bad. You kind of have the ability to dodge them. Um, but there is going to be a level later on where we set the Gordos free, and it is probably one of the scariest runs of the, levels of the run. <laughs> yeah. So you can see lots of... Uh, like getting really close to these worms here to get the fastest cycles and all of the uh, for all the dots. That was pretty good. Worm food can be pretty scary. To get the best cycle, you have to be yeah, you have to be really close to the worms. So a good part of this run is also overworld movement. So like sit there, I decided to break the boxes prior because I have P speed before I go into cosmic rhythm. Yes, and introducing us to another new enemy, the arrows. Yeah, they're not too scary. They're very predictable. So, you know, you just got to learn the cycles, learn the path that works for you, be ready for their movement. It gets scary when they start mixing in with the other enemies. And this is stop time where the game is like, you know, you can stop yourself if you haven't done that yet. And we've definitely done that yet because it maintains our P speed and allows us to, you know, have a lot of control over the character. Uh, but this is the first level that actually requires it because you have to stop and wait for these little wormies. All right, cool. Yeah, death in these kind of levels can be really punishing because you have to do the whole thing over again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I reset there because micro life is a really tight cycle. Um, and I knew that if I bonked, I wasn't going to make it. And I only know how to do this level one way. Uh, <laughs> and that's true for a lot of these levels. It's like, it's there is 
room for improv, but you're just losing so much time if you do it that for me, it's like, I'm gonna reset on this level because my girl life has a very tight cycle, especially in the central section. It's very scary. Yeah, I guess something we didn't mention is the quick menuing to return to map when hitting the portal at the end of every level. It does mm -hmm. save about, I don't know, two seconds or so, I would say, every time. Yeah, you skip having to watch a cutscene where, like, Geek Girl just, like, goes into the portal and, like, zooms out. Um, and so we, we like to quick menu, and my menuing could probably be faster, honestly. Alright, I knew I was gonna die because I didn't get enough dots, so I waited on that versus trying to... You know, I could have maybe gotten it, but it would have been scary. Yeah, there you right. can see that the Gordo explosion also breaks the boxes. Yeah, yeah, which becomes really important later in a, in a later level as well. All right, get your Gregs in the chat. Welcome to our best friend, the mascot of this game, Greg. This is why this is a horror game on Twitch. He is our friend, but he also punishes us. And <laughs> you have to appease Greg to get good runs in this game. He is here, yes. <laughs> Greg is here. <laughs> Greg's in the chat. You'll love to see it. Thank you, everyone, for the Gregs. <laughs> really helps me out. And now we have the portals. You kind of saw the portals on the overworld. This is the first level where the portals are really significant. Oh, and I didn't have enough P-Speed to break the box. Uh, so I was going to die anyway, so I reset. Um, it's really important to break the boxes here. Um, the enemies can go in portals just like you can. Greg can go in portals just like you can. So you have to really plan around it. Yeah, take note of this level shape because it may show up again later with a, with a small twist. <laughs> All right, and now we're we're finally going into where kind of the route diverges. Uh, Freefall is a level we've routed out of any percent, and you'll see why. Um, this is one of my favorite levels casually, um, just because it's really funny to see the um, Greglings just fall forever. Uh, and I plan around it. I am intentionally trying to get some of the Greglings to fall um, because it actually makes my life easier. But what you don't want is for them to fall in opposite directions. Then it becomes nearly impossible to beat the level. Um, so I'm trying to get this top Gregling to kind of go out of the way. Cool. So this shouldn't be a too much of a problem now, as long as that Gregling gets out of my way. That was a pretty good free fall. <laughs> yeah, these enemies have my probably my favorite piece of code, uh, yes. which is the function called consider getting angry. I think <laughs> it's pretty great. It's so cute. <laughs> Uh, something in this level, this is a pretty scary level casually, I would say. Um, you notice that the lightning bolts that the Gordo shoot also can go through the portals, and it gets really hectic really quickly if you aren't uh, very fast. That level's terrifying. I take a slightly slower cycle just because dying on that level is really infuriating and scary. <laughs> We go to pen pals. Pen pals is generally fine, but sometimes this gargling is having a bad day. Oh, I also missed that yellow dot. Oh, now we're okay. We're just gonna reset that. Thank you, gargling. I actually needed that. Um, this one could be really tricky because the Gordo is kind of moving in weird directions. The gargling can choose to be annoying, um, but this is the only level you can get the dots in any order you wish. I go left side first. I don't think it actually really makes a huge difference. Oh, that lightning bolt was very That close. was so scary! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's fine, we're out. And it's time for Greg's revenge. So it's time for chat's revenge also. Get some Greg's in the chat, please. And here's that level shape that I mentioned. And Greg would be the twist. Yeah, so this is basically Highway 2 um, with the addition of some boxes and the addition of Greg. Uh, so there's actually a, a sweet fast cycle here as long as Greg doesn't heck it up. That's like a perfect level. Um, there are times where Greg will kill you um, and you just have to be careful for that. But otherwise, that's a very safe cycle for that level. Yes, and a new enemy here. Have we seen this Smish yet? I don't think so. Nope, I don't think so. This is generally their first appearance. So here is the Smish. And if you aren't careful, they will smish you. Yeah, they, they will definitely smish you. They are probably my favorite enemy, both in the speedrun and casually, because like they're just really cute. Um, and you can absolutely control what they do. So like you're controlling exactly where they go. It's just all about how you route the level. 
We all called them Thwomps before the dev came in and let us have access to the code, basically, and then we saw all the true names of the enemies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in this level, there's a special kind of trick that exists. Are you going to be attempting it? Oh yeah, there we go. So, if you're on one of these portals, the smish actually can't hit you. It hits the portal before it can hit you, and that's uh, something that we in the community call Math Clip, named after me. <laughs> named after me, smile. <laughs> smile, yes. Another math clip. Ooh, very nice. Cool, that was sketchy with that lost gargling, but it kind of dashed in the right direction. Face first can be really scary. That also used to be in the any percent. Uh, you could choose between face first and assembly line, and we routed assembly line to be much more consistent because, again, it has smish versus gargling's. Um, so in any percent, I always take assembly line, um, but it can be really tight. And it's it's a technically difficult level. If you turn wrong at any moment, you will die. Um, but I prefer assembly line by far because the smish are really consistent. Oh, speaking of a not consistent level, here's high five. Uh, <laughs> I'll let Eric kind of explain what's going on in this one because it's yeah, hard. there is a lot going on in this level. So you'll notice the smish is basically constantly moving through the portals and will never stop. Um, and meanwhile, you have our favorite RNG enemy, the Greglings, or Haunters, as they're officially called, trying their best to uh, get in your way. Um, something you might have just noticed is that if you're in the process of moving between portals, and an enemy is also in the process of moving between those two same portals, you actually will survive. So No! Oh, that was going pretty okay. And then I, I couldn't escape there. Ah, very unfortunate. This can get really bad if, like, for example, in the pink dot section, if all the Greglings are just over there. Uh, it's really hard, like they're doing right now. Awesome. <sighs> and the they smidge really... right at the beginning, too, <laughs> a lot of the time. <laughs> they're not letting you collect these dots. No. This level's definitely the least consistent, even though it's not my least favorite. We saved the best for last in this run, literally. Oh, why did I go in that portal? I did not mean to. Shoot. Everything's fine, everything's fine. A lot of times I'll strategically like have the haunters um, dash at me because I can kind of use that to my advantage like I did there to get them out of the way. Um, but sometimes they're unpredictable in what direction they go in. So it's, it's a little bit of like a risk reward kind of scenario. Okay, I'm good. Sure. I just want to beeline it to the portal. <laughs> yeah, get out of there. <laughs> Late arrival, what could that mean? Hmm. I hear the music. I hear some suspicious chomping. Oh, it's Greg! Oh, no. Surprise! He's back. This level is probably the easiest of the guard levels, honestly, um, as long as you're just paying attention to where he is and going, you know, accordingly. I probably could have gone one earlier than that, but I always like to play this level super safe. Yeah, so that uses another mechanic of the uh, the portal kind of continually grows until it until you finally go into it. So I purposely am freeing the Gordos here because I need them to get out of the way for the pink dot section. So I also free that one on purpose. And then it kind of frees me up to clear all these pink dots. Because otherwise, if you wait to clear it, it makes the pink dot section so much harder. Um, but now this this is one of the scariest levels in the game. Uh, it also isn't assist assisted by the background. The background makes it kind of hard to see what's going on, especially with all the lightning bolts. And there's two Gordos that are kind of free roaming. Uh, and the flippers, <laughs> so it's scary. I played this level pretty safe. But sometimes there's not a lot you can do, like right now. <sighs> yeah, this is more like a survival game at this point. Yeah, it really, it really is. Oh, I accidentally activated that Gordo. That's, that's fine, I guess. Gordo, don't come towards me. Okay. Oh my gosh, I almost went straight into that flipper. Okay, we're good now. Houses. Now, Eat Girl can be classified as survival horror. It <laughs> All right. 
Into Mobius. Mobius is like... It's, it's an interesting one. This is the only level that doesn't have yellow dots in the whole game. Uh, you only have to get purple and blue, thank goodness. Oh god, we're, do we're doing this again. If you get off cycle, this level gets much harder. Oh, I thought it- Oh, no, that lightning bolt! Oh, that was unfortunate. Oof. Yeah, the Gordos can be really nasty here. But yeah, this is a, probably a good time for any donations, because this level kind of takes a little bit and is hard. Uh, well, unfortunately I don't have any, but just to remind you lovely folks that we are very, very quickly running out of time uh, to meet that incentive for Frozen uh, for Frozen Plagon, I can words, <laughs> <laughs> to do the true any percent run. Uh, additionally, a new bid war has been put up fairly recently uh, since we did meet that $12,000 incentive uh, to for take this to dye their hair. Um, mm. Let me just find these colors. So you can bid on which color they actually do dye their hair, and you can choose between blue, green, pink, and purple. Uh, additionally, coming up next, we do have Zombies Ate My Neighbors, because we're going to kind of continue this little horror trend. Right? <laughs> it's almost Halloween. Uh, the current uh, player character is Julia with $10, but, uh, you know, maybe you want to see Zeke. So that's still open for change as of right now. Very, very exciting. And, uh, of course, you can always bid to make the Valks miserable and play Alf. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Now we're moving into the worst level of the run. We have Greg here. This level's called Marching Ants. You have to not only avoid Greg in this very small space, you have to do it with the time of the worms. Uh, this is absolutely the hardest level, and it's the penultimate level of the category, um, which makes it kind of intimidating. But... Uh, we're looking pretty, pretty solid as long as Greg doesn't kill me right here. That's okay. Uh, I think that was a first try. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you get me talking, I can do anything. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> great. All right. And, and yeah, here we go. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, this is the last level. This is escape. Um, a bit different than the rest of the levels. We are just kind of going in a line here instead of navigating a small maze. Um, and yeah, so uh, the main thing here is to keep the P speed on these turns because if you bonk here, it loses. It feels like it loses at least like five seconds to mm -hmm. to not keep your P speed. I love the end of this game. Escape is so satisfying. Like you get to see all the enemies. It's really just pure movement, and I didn't bonk a single time, so that was really solid. And time. Yay! That was a great run. That was a really good run. Uh, 1714 is really solid. My PB is a 1654, so that's only like about 20 seconds over. Uh, Very good. Very first nice. try marching ants is what you always want to see, especially in a marathon. Um, so thank you so much to Tesla for making this game, uh, to all the members of the community who I see in chat, to Eric for uh, keeping me calm throughout marching ants and all that run, <laughs> and just being a good friend. So thank you so much for being here, Eric. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks to the Vox for always being incredible. Uh, I'm so happy this is my first time getting to run for Ragnarok. My first time, you know, really being able to do marathon season. And it's been an incredible experience. And Take This is awesome. Uh, so I guess this is one last check to see if we've met the True Pure Any Percent incentive. Otherwise, I will dip out. We just got a $50 donation. And it's really, really close. Uh, if anybody wants to throw in and another... Uh, hold on, I can math. Um, another 36 bucks. We can get this done right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, spicy. <laughs> but uh, I do want to thank uh, Bean Jammin for that $50 donation. That is that is very appreciated. Aw, thanks, Bean. That's my, that's my fiancé. Hi. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you're interested in running this game, um, as I said at the, the top of this run, um, this is in the itch bundle for racial equality. So many of you have this game already. It's really good casually. It took me about like two and a half hours probably to beat and find all the levels. Um, you didn't get to see any of the hidden levels in any percent. So you can still have the opportunity to find all those for yourself, which is really fun. 
Um, I definitely recommend you give this a play. Yeah, and uh, if uh, you want to look at the speedrun.com website, there's a link to the community Discord to uh, if you have any questions or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, good news, Frozen Flygon. We just got $36 from ground, ground Flyer that says, do it. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you so much for helping us meet that incentive. We'll talk a little bit about the lore of why it's called the silly name. Um, so true, pure, any percent. Um, I'm a Celeste player. Eric's a Celeste player. Many of the runners happen to be Celeste players. Uh, there's a meme category in Celeste called true, pure, any percent, where you just go to the prologue, enter the cheat code, and you win because you unlock Summit technically. This category is inspired by that. There's a cheat code that unlocks all the levels. The only difference is you actually have to go to the overworld and get the final dots that are essentially the true ending. So there's a little bit of skill involved, but for the most part, it's kind of a meme and it's really fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, the, the rules of this category are you can do whatever you need to do, unlock all the levels beforehand, and then just go through a yellow portal at the end. And there is one that just happens to be pretty quick. Yeah, it's really like it's a really funny category. There's like one actual tech that's involved with running this. Um, so yeah, let's. I'm gonna clear my file and then unlock the file, and then we'll be ready to go. So thank you so much to everyone who donated to help make this incentive possible. I'm glad I could stall and talk enough to make that happen. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you did too. <laughs> so let's get TPA rolling in three, two, one, go. All right, I have blue flame. That's the most important part is keeping blue flame through that maze. Uh, blue flame is a power up that's unlocked when you beat escape for the first time. And it allows you to break the silver crates. And we need to break silver crates to get to the true ending portal. Yeah, so we're going to basically be skipping everything uh, all the way to the very end where escape was, except we're not going to be going into escape. And it was really funny because when we originally did this category, everyone was like, okay, let's, you just go through it and go to escape. And then we were like, why would you go to escape? Hold on. We can just go to the true ending, which is much faster. Um, so that was kind of funny. Uh, and it is a lot faster, especially if you keep blue flame because you can just break that silver crate and then you get to dots. Yes, the overworld level. It was a level all along. It's very, very Baba is you. <laughs> oh little little routing mishap there but overall everything's fine oh there's a pink dot that escaped me and time that's true for any percent <laughs> very nice very silly uh, my pb is a 109 i think i just got like i timed it at a 114 um and then you get this wonderful ending screen uh, that is really adorable and is my favorite part of True Pure 100%. <laughs> yeah, definitely a throwback here. It reminds me, at least, of those old uh, Windows Solitaire card games. Yes, and this is the time where I kill the stream bit rate, uh, but I, I, I feel like it was for a good cause. Uh, <laughs> it was definitely for a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to see that wonderful Easter egg, um, but... Yeah, just thank you so much again to the Vox for having us. I love this game. I love running it. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much.